Hello everyone, thank you for joining us. In this video we're going to be looking at how to test a boat hull like an engineer. We're going to be following several steps that I've devised that can help you build a boat hull, test it, and make sure that it works for your needs. So let's get started. So first thing first, we need our actual boat hull. So what I like to do first is consider the size of the vessel that we need. Now in this case, I want to build something a little bigger, a bigger platform than normal. So we get started on that. Now there's many ways to build a boat hull, including ways that are very complex and ways that are simplistic. In this video, we're not going to go through the more advanced techniques of hull design but rather the stages of testing your hull. My personal preference is to build a hull that has the um, more streamlined appearance versus a hull that's kind of blocky. In essence, just using the different blocks. And I try to make an integration into the two different types. So see this? doesn't look as nice but if we remove this and put that look at that so that's sort of just my basic hull design that i try to follow but there's many different types so there's no right or wrong and work whatever system that you prefer uh, there's, like I said, no right or wrong. It's all, it, it all comes down to different types of designs. But then what you want to do is test it. So I'm just going to skip until I have the hull ready and we'll start the testing. Now I prefer to have a bulbous bow in most cases, but in this one we're just going to make a simple angled bow. And then also another thing that I like is when the side of the vessel kind of drops down like this and you end up with kind of a flat portion where you can put ladders and stuff. And then the rest of it can be angled downward into the center, sort of like this. So that's, again, my own personal preference. Many different ways to do it, but uh, the testing comes into play where you have to do, where you have to decide what this vessel is going to be used for. So, if right off the bat I decide this is going to be used for carrying airplanes, this might be too small. But if I want to say this is going to be maybe a submarine launch, that may be able to work. And then I always like to use the uh, tool to sort of select some of this hull that I've created and just drag it on for the length that I'm looking for. Now, the reason I'm building it with you and showing this is not to give you instructions on how to build a hull, but just to explain that I also have no idea the characteristics of this hull. We'll just make it flat back and fill the inside. Obviously, it has to be watertight, but again, this video is not how to create a nice looking hull, though not awful. So, we have this. We're going to add some ladders to make sure that we can climb up. That's just for ourselves. And that's the first step is just to have a hull. So this is our prototype. And we've determined that this is what we need it for. So the functionality is something they have to consider. So in this case, let's say we're going to be deploying submarines and has a helicopter somewhere. This should be the right size for that. So we could put a helicopter somewhere there, even raised up, and the very back can be for the submarine. Maybe it needs to be a little longer in that case. I've extended it, and in this case now with the helicopter, say this one, we could put it here, raised up on a little catwalk, and the submarine launch can be in the back, so that's good. And then we want to put sort of a cabin a front facing cabin here. Now your prototype hull design, keep in mind, the more 
realistic or accurate you build it with uh, your blocks right off the bat, the better the testing will be. So what I mean is the hull itself can be modeled properly, like the bottom part, but unless you have the superstructure also more or less properly modeled, it won't give you accurate results. So you have to have an idea of what your superstructure and functionality, all that stuff is going to be before you can accurately say, okay, this is what I want my boat. Uh, the reason why is because it affects your center of gravity. So that's this guy and it affects the speed. It affects the weight, the balance. So it's not enough to just say, okay, like here's my hull. You got to build up on that. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a very basic hull here or superstructure. And how I do that, I always like to start with the doors, at least to get us the height of our ceilings or the height of our floors. So this would be say one height. And then we need the floor level, obviously above it right here. And then we need another door and that's going to give us our reference height and a little catwalk here. Like we said, or a big catwalk for the helicopter. We'll build our superstructure here and that will be enough to get us started. You don't have to put all the windows. You don't have to make it fully sealed off like that doesn't matter so much but what does matter is that the basic shape is there with you and then of course we'll have a massive gantry crane on the rear something like that it doesn't have to be on pivots yet like just the again the basic shape so let's say we're happy with this all right the next thing after we've confirmed what this is for so the functionality so here we have it we could put a helicopter here and we could put a submarine back there so functionality check and that coincides with size so size check so our hull will be will suffice the purposes we need it for now the speed testing is where it gets interesting you can go ahead and you know put two large engines and just by the way, in this video, we're going to be looking at uh, large engines, but this process works with the same for even modulars or smaller engines with smaller boats or ships. So say we have ourselves three engines. Let's just that that way I can or rather my experience will be sort of telling me that this type of size will need three, three large engines. So here we have them. And then what I always like to do is have a rear ballast tank. So that's this guy. I close off an area for the front ballast tank. That's this. And side ballast tanks. So we'll close this off here. They don't have to be the full length, but in this case, we'll just do it like this. So that leaves us with this center area. Now here's our engine room as we have it. And then we'll need a fuel tank for these engines. My preference is to have the fuel tank in the center of the vessel beneath the engines. That way it's super easy for the engines to collect that fuel. And we're going to set a fuel fluid spawner with our diesel. Now this chamber is fairly big, so it's going to weigh down the boat, but it's also going to put a lot of, uh, it's going to make the center of mass right in the center, which is exactly where we want. To be honest, this can probably be reduced since it's the full length, maybe like that. And then this region, we can either attach it to our ballast tanks here or just leave them separate as they are. And then they could be kind of a watertight compartment. But that's not the point of this video. It's sort of get a realistic prototype working. So we got our fuel tank and the next thing we need to do is to put some propellers on. So I went ahead and put these two propellers here, the huge propellers, and I went ahead and attached them to 
electric motors. Now keep in mind, these electric motors are only here for this test, meaning we're doing the test to get us our top speed and it'll get us a value that we then know that this hull is capable of. So we got our motors. I'm going to put one motor for each propeller actually, and I'm going to attach it to this throttle lever that I put. I'm going to go and delete the other two throttle levers. That was just a little test I was doing earlier. Now note that I did make the hull a little deeper by three blocks. So you'd see here and it, th this nice uh, curvature on the end. So it's three blocks deeper and I made the propellers go on the very bottom. That extra buoyancy will actually help us float better. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. So I'll dis discuss what that po point of that is. So we have our motors here and they're gonna be or our engines and that's what's gonna power our vessel. But that's not what we're gonna be doing for the test. For the test, I'm just gonna use these electric motors with these two propellers just to make sure that the vessel can go fast enough that I want, like the hull design is good enough. And most importantly, that these two propellers give it enough power. So what this is gonna tell us, as long as these electric motors, as long as they're maxing out these propellers, that's gonna be our top speed. So when we go ahead and build an engine or build these three or four, or whatever we wanna put, we're going to have a baseline number that we're going to have right now. So whether it's 30 knots, then say we put one engine, obviously that one engine will not be able to keep up with the two propellers. So they won't be running at full capacity. Maybe we're only going to be getting 10 knots. So we're going to know we have 20 more knots. We can max out of these propellers. Now, obviously if you put more propellers, it'll go faster, but then you need more engines and everything. So there's kind of a fine line that you want. And we're going to go ahead and put a battery. Now the battery in this case, for this type of boat or vessel, we probably like, I tend either to have one single large or maybe a couple of these medium ones. So let's go and try a large and let's pretend there was a generator here and whatever. So that large is going to count for that. And I'm just going to go and attach these. Now, one thing that I've also done, if we spawn this is I've turned on infinite fuel and infinite electric technically infinite fuel doesn't matter to us but infinite electric does because that means that these motors are going to work at full capacity and not get drained as the battery drains and all this stuff so it's going to give us a baseline number and then we're going to try to make our diesel engines match that. So if we pop in and turn this throttle lever up, these ones are going. And here we are, we're getting up to 27 knots, which honestly, I'm pretty happy. Maybe we can pull out a little extra, like maybe 30 in total. And that would be done, to be honest, with stabilizers and things, because look how high the front's riding. So stabilization system may actually optimize that and get us to 30. But for that, we now have a baseline number that we can make sure that these engines get us our 30 knots. And that's kind of the top speed for this configuration. If I go ahead and add more propellers, And for this one, we're just going to put a medium and we're going to put a one of the large propellers here. So we have two of them and we're just going to connect that with this and we're going to plug in our throttle lever to all of these guys. So with just two extra propellers, forget the fact there's the engine because the motors, let's see if we get 30. around 33, 32 with these four propellers. So I don't like to play with infinite fuel or infinite electric, but it is worthwhile that the testing phase can be helped 
or can be facilitated with that setting. So now what I'd go ahead and do, delete these, delete these, Maybe the side ones would stay electric, kind of like what, what I have in the RSV Avala, where there's a hybrid mode, and you have actually some propellers run on electric, and then these main ones would be fed with transmissions and all that stuff into these engines. But now we know that when we get these three engines running, we put our air, we put our whatever, we're going to be confirming if they can get us to our 30 or 27 knots with just the two main propellers. So keeping infinite fuel and infinite electric lets us also do a quick and dirty test of these engines to make sure that they are able to push our propellers back here. So I went ahead and just attached the engines directly to these two propellers and not even plugged in any of this stuff on the front but I did put my microcontroller here that feeds from the seat with my W and goes to throttle out, key input and starter. So just a simple system to make sure that the engines can power up. And if we go into the boat now, or into the ship or vessel, start up the engines. Now there's no clutch, there's no transmission. So these are directly fed from the engines. Now look at that, we're redlining and we're getting 30 but we're redlining them so that means these engines when connected because regardless the, the, this is the power they're gonna get this is what they're gonna get or this is what they're gonna produce so we can go ahead and put a gear in here whatever gear you want I know there's been some discussion and this is where the gear testing begins so let's say if we do three to two now I think this is gonna give us even lower redline it's gonna not help but flipped the other way. Look at that, we redlined super early. So the gear <clears throat> is required to, or now it's producing the, it's the gearing is making the propellers lower than the actual engine, which is not what we want, we want the opposite. So now, if we put our same three to two, I guess we don't even have to plug in the electric with infinite. Again, I don't play in infinite fuel or electric, but for testing, it is worthwhile. It saves you time. Now, there's no clutch, so it just instantly jumps. So look at that. With 3 to 2, we're getting 23 knots. So we've reduced the power to the propellers too much. If we put 6 to 5, that may be our sweet spot, but also what you could consider doing at that point is removing an engine. Let's see. So there we have it. We're not redlining and we're getting our 28 knots. Now, of course, if you turn this on, that's our hybrid mode. Look at that. We're at 37. And that's just feeding these little ones on the side here. Now, obviously, you need a generator that keeps up with the consumption of that hybrid mode or what I have is a hybrid mode that automatically adjusts to how much battery you have so as you drain your batteries you're actually going to end up uh, reducing the throttle on the electric ones to make your generator catch up to them but there we have it so this now vessel this test vessel is able to reach 30 knots under the full like perfect circumstances, meaning infinite electric and infinite uh, fuel, but these motors, or these three uh, diesel motors, with this gearing ratio, can get us around our 27 knots, which is okay with me. So now you could obviously fine-tune, you could remove an engine, you could change this gearing around, maybe two engines with the proper gearing can actually get you the same thing, so you could see how that works, but now at least we know, we have a baseline number that this test vessel is getting us 27 with regular diesel or like 35 with the hybrid mode, which is pretty good. It's not, I mean, it's not super fast, but it's pretty fast. And then not to mention when you add the stabilizing functions and stuff, that may change. It may become faster or slower. But regardless, that's the step of the te testing for the speed. 
So after that, the step is that you just make changes as necessary. So like I said, you could try the different motor types, different gearing and all that. And then lastly, to keep in mind is this center of gravity. So right now it's in a decent spot, but we also do have this thing full of flu fluid. What's sketchy is if you've run out of diesel or you're really low on diesel, like 7%, this vessel may become too hot top heavy. And in any type of storm, it may really want to just fall over, especially if it's in that proper direction. So for that reason, like without that fuel weighing it down in the center, look at it go. So the hull design may work. You may have a good speed and stuff, but you're getting poor center of gravity. So then you have to go back to the drawing board and either at that point, make provisions that fill up your ballast tanks equivalently while you use fuel. So I actually have that microcontroller where I, where as my fuel gets consumed, my ballast tanks start to fill up automatically. Now that does make you slower or rather it makes you always at that top speed with the full fuel tank because you're gaining uh, liquid where you're wasting, you're spending your fuel. So you never end up with a less with less weighted liquid in your system, but at least you, you, you get the stability. So that's what I probably would do in this case. I would just have the ballast tanks turn on automatically. And of course, these uh, nice weighted blocks are really good, especially if you have kind of like a little center fin, like some yachts or some uh, sailboats do, even just like this. In this case, it's a pretty big vessel, so I don't think this would help that much, but you never know. It's worth testing as well. That's something else. So now with that one there, and if we jump to our boat, even with um, the empty fuel tanks, it does ride a little lower. So it, in, in turn, it's going to be a tad slower. We've added weight, but really it should be negligible with the power of our engines. Let me turn this down. And some, in some cases it helps, so check that out. We're getting 30 now because it actually put weight on the back and our front is riding higher. Now also what can get you that type of thing is that, that stabilization system I was talking about where you have a trim rudder on the front bottom here. You put your trim rudder and it'll adjust or you set it to whatever you want and it'll give you that bit of a boost in top speed. But Regardless, for the sake of this video, that's what I had in mind. We start with a prototype, you make it as realistic as possible to what you're trying to do, and that will get you kind of the weight, weighting and all that good stuff. Then you make sure that the size is right. So in this case, we could put a helicopter and a mini sub and functionality, of course. So we have our crane, we have this little air lifted area below this. I mean, you could either have this fully sealed off. This could be a research lab, for example, it doesn't have to be open, or if it is open, you could make it some type of storage. There could be more mini subs there with cranes that drop it up, bring the mini subs out here. But in essence, we checked off our functionality, we checked off our size, and the last thing was speed. So using the infinite diesel and electric, we did quick and dirty tests to sort of get the top speed that this vessel can go at. So then when we turn off our infinite diesel and infinite electric, we're still going to have that baseline number in our heads and we're going to always try to match the gearing and match the engines to get that number. So in this case, it was around 30 knots. Make changes as necessary. And finally, the center of gravity so you don't end up tipping over. Obviously, stability controls and measures can be used to help you with that. But in essence, that is it for the testing. That's the steps I take for testing any vessel, getting it kind of seaworthy and worthwhile. And then the rest is, I mean, the functionality, the different microcontrollers, the GPS the positioning, the stability controls and all that. Like there's tons of microcontrollers I use, but this is the down and dirty of it. And uh, after that, it's just aesthetics. I mean, making windows here, making, you know, living areas and whatever, but that's pretty much it folks. So. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Please feel free to comment what you think and stay tuned for more.
happy strummixing. <laughs>